Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today, we're continuing our Women in Engineering series, and we're very excited to have with us Mary Burgoon, who is the Business Development Manager with the Academy of Advanced Manufacturing at Rockwell Automation. So welcome, Mary. Hi, thanks for having me today. Oh, we're very excited to have you. Uh, how are you doing today? I am great. I am great. Thanks so much. Now, you're, you're based where? I am based at the Rockwell Automation uh, headquarters here in Milwaukee. Um, actually, now I'm based at my satellite office at home because of the pandemic. But in normal, when the world is normal, um, I work out of our headquarters in Milwaukee. Gotcha. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. So, you know, we love to start these the series, the hero episodes, particularly this Women in Engineering series, with just a general observation of their journey. So how, what could you tell our listeners? So, well, I've had a wide and varied path. Um, to get where I am now as the business development manager for this particular program. I started out, I, I went to engineering school. I'm a mechanical engineer, and I started out for a number of years working. I'm from uh, St. Louis originally, and I started out after, after I graduated, I worked for Emerson Electric, and I designed electric motors, um, and it was great. And I had I learned a lot, but I realized there was, I don't know, I wanted to explore, and I wanted to leave and maybe explore a little bit more of the U.S., so I moved to a company in Minneapolis, and I did application engineering, and I did project management, and then I went to some contract negotiations, and I went into sales, and I sold some capital equipment there. And then I, I met my husband, and he was working in, in uh, Milwaukee, so I moved to Milwaukee. I don't know how I keep ending up in cold weather places when I love the warm weather. Um, and I worked for a company, and I I sold bearings. I sold bearings to, you know, big bearings to like Siemens and General Electric. And then I, you know, I was doing engineering sales and a lot of, you know, design at that point as well. And then I just decided I wanted to try something else. And I came to Rockwell and I worked at Rockwell. I did a lot of different things at Rockwell. I did, I did product safety. I managed product safety. I worked in our, our standards group, global standards and trade. So I did some government affairs. Then I went into strategic marketing because I missed the commercial side of the business. And then that sort of led me to where I am now, which is in business development. Okay. So, and I think I heard you correctly. So you have an Emmy, right? Yeah, I'm an Emmy. Correct. So you're an Emmy working for the largest automation company in, right. in the world. How's that, how's that going for you? <laughs> It's going great. I mean, it's going great. We, I knew all about drives from all my experience with motors. I, and I took, you know, even, even though it was, a, even though I was a mechanical engineer, we did quite a bit of controls, but you know, I haven't done, I haven't done any like hardcore engineering in a long time, but my background is, is come in very useful. Right. And I've, I've had, I've done stints in, in operations. So that, that's helped as well. So I've got, I've, like I said, it's not it's not been a direct path for sure. No, no doubt. I just I always love the banter with the the Emmys and the double E's, the way it goes back and forth. And one of the best employees I've ever had the pleasure to work with was the Emmy, and he always would say, "There's two rules, you know. Rule number one: the Emmy is always right. Rule number two: refer to rule number one, you know. So, so it's always fun. But that's, I agree with that, Chris. Those are good rules to live by. I hear you. Spoken, spoken like a true ME. So there you go. So, <laughs> you know, Mary, you, you, you see a lot of things in your in your career path and you're tied directly to industry and you have a really good purview of things that are coming, things that are challenging manufacturers and industry right now. What, what are you seeing as, as some headwinds that industry has coming over in the next five years or so? So I think some of the challenges that we're facing is one, there's just not enough people that are needed to replenish those people that are retiring. We've got all of these people that have dedicated themselves to manufacturing. They've got a lot of knowledge, skills, and abilities, but Hey, they've, they've reached the point now where they want to take some time and go play golf, go lay on a beach, spend time with their family. So I think some of the challenges 
is that we don't have enough people and enough people with the right skills going into manufacturing. And part of it is, hey, manufacturing doesn't have the best reputation, right? People still think of it as unsafe or it's dark or it's dirty. You know, they don't think of it as a high tech career choice. So I think, you know, I think there's an ad campaign or a PR campaign that is needed to help people realize that it is really a cool place. And there's a lot of cool things that are happening in manufacturing today. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, changing that perception is important because it, it is a wonderful place. There's so many different things are happening across manufacturing. So, you know, th- I definitely agree with you there. And, you know, for this series, we're, we're trying to speak directly to the women that are listening and inspire them. Mm-hmm. Do you have any advice for the women that may be listening that you'd like to share about entering this in- industry or things that they should consider? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things, and you probably noticed that my very career path is that their manufacturing and companies like Rockwell, industrial companies like that, there are a lot of options. You are not, you are not held, you don't have to do like my parents that worked in the same role for 30 or 40 years. You could have a variety of experiences and a variety of challenges. And, and so I would, I would say that this is a great place to start a career. Manufacturing is a great place. You could go into the operation side of it. You could go in the design side of it. You could be in sourcing. You could be product management. Rockwell, like many companies, has a rotational option where you could try different things. You could try sales. You could try product management. You could do a rotation in another in another country. I just think that it affords a lot of options uh, for an individual. And that's something that I would suggest would be should be a strong consideration. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that, that rotational program sounds wonderful. So kind of dip your toes in to the different pools and see which one you like, right? That's right. That's right. You may find that you may really say, you know, product management isn't for me, but I love the design aspect of it. I love to, I love to design it and then go out and build it on the shop floor. Well, that's really, that, that's an option. Absolutely. Yeah, no doubt. So are there any obstacles or hurdles that women may face? when they're coming into industry? You know, I think just probably like any, any, any place of, I'm not, you know, where there's, where the predominant, uh, I would say employer employees are, are male. I think there's always a little uh, perception like, wow, this is just, you know, am I going to be taken seriously? Am I going to be respected? Uh, am I going to have a voice? How can I have an impact? How can I make an impact? And I, I don't think that's changed from when I first went into industry, nor nor does it do I see it any different people having those same considerations. But what I think is different today and what I know is different today is that there are a lot more women in the workforce. There are a lot more women in different roles. There are a lot more women in leadership. They're not the only person in a meeting that looks like them. And that, you know, the world is a different place today. People are having conversations and say, how do we make our workforce more equitable? So I think, you know, that's another, now is a great time to come into engineering. Now is a great time to come into manufacturing. No doubt. I mean, thank you, Mary. And, you know, one thing I would love to ask in, in this series as well is, is, are there myths? Are there any myths out there that you'd like to debunk about women in industry? Because I know there, there are some, and we've heard some, some great answers in this series. Just curious from your take, from your standpoint, anything you'd like to debunk? Yeah, I think there's a couple. I think that, um, you know, that women aren't capable of doing this kind of work, right? A woman in manufacturing, gosh, our women as an engineer. I remember when I, um, when I told one of my older relatives that I was going to engineering school and his sons were going to engineering school and he made some comments. Now, he, granted, he was from the old country. He made some comments to me like, how do you get your mind to work that way? You know, so I think the fact that women are no different. Women are very technically astute. So that'd be one thing to overcome. And that women aren't as committed to a career. That would be the other thing that I would, I would debunk as well. That's a myth that is not the truth at all. Nope. Women are very ambitious. No doubt they're ambitious. I mean, we need more of them. And Mary, I, 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 hopefully you'll share this podcast with that gentleman. Uh, I'd love for him to hear this conversation. I will. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Turn him on to Eco SY because I think this would be great because I, I think he could be inspired and maybe uh, that tone will change because that's the type of tone. I mean, I, I, I'm kidding, but seriously, I mean, we've heard that. I've heard people say it. And I get pretty passionate. I got two daughters 
and and I'm and they're they're looking forward to to listening to these conversations as we go through them. You're right that I mean perception's got to change and uh, hats off to you for your voice and and for sharing this information and and I know one thing we we, we always like to give a, a chance for the people that come on the podcast to 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 give shout outs to mentors or people who have been influential in their careers. Did anybody come to mind for you? You know, I've had all along I've had great mentors and people that have probably didn't even know they were my mentors all along, but all the way back in school when I was taking that really nurtured my interest in science and math and physics. People that, you know, people that nurtured because I didn't come from a family of engineers. Uh, at all. My dad was a homicide detective. So people that really nourish, nurtured that in myself. And then when I, in college, and then when I started work, I had some really strong women to look up to. And at Rockwell, Sushimiyama was a great one. Right now we have great leaders in our organization, like Tessa and Rachel Conrad. But then also, you know, there's a lot of male leaders in our organization too. You know, a lot of them have, have unbeknownst to them, have really served as mentors to me and I look at them and say, sometimes they'll say, what would they do in this situation? And, and then I would, and I would do that. So. Well, that is great. Thank you for sharing that with us and for our listeners. And, you know, Mary, I'm curious for you personally, you know, what gets you excited about the future? Any, any projects or any type of work that's, that gets you really pumped up right now? I, I, you know, I'm excited about a couple things. One is, is my day job, which I absolutely love. I say that I have, the best job in the whole company. And people tell me that I have the best job in the whole company. So it's verified. It's validated. I'm pretty excited about what Rockwell's doing to really to address that workforce skills gap. And it's helping veterans. And it's the Academy of Advanced Manufacturing. I think that is really exciting. The other thing that I'm really excited about, and I work a lot in, in our community, is helping young girls and helping people that are in underserved communities understand and recognize that they have the ability and the talent to be engineers, to go into STEM fields. That's pretty exciting to me. And so I work with them as much as I can on behalf of Rockwell and in my personal life, I do that. And then the other thing that is really super exciting is what's going on at Rockwell. All the advances that technology brings, especially now during this pandemic, how companies are adapting, how, how work is changing, how because of the technology that's there, we can't fly someplace to work on a repair a piece of equipment, but we now have technology that we could speak to a person almost like FaceTime and help maybe somebody that may not have the right skills completely at that location repair it with an expert that's sitting up here at Rockwell. So I think those kinds of technology that's evolving and helping people be more productive, I think it's pretty darn exciting. It is exciting. I mean, the whole digital transformation, the way things, just the way things are changing from the manufacturing, the, the plant floor, you know, it's amazing exactly. when you look back a few years ago to where we're at now and, and to think about where it could be, you know, it's, 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 it's really exciting. And, and this, we're trying. It is really exciting. And I agree, Chris. And it's, and it just goes to show that manufacturing is really a high tech industry. You know, everybody's seen those videos of, all those robots making cars. And I was really fortunate to be able to tour the Tesla plant and talk about robots. Amazing. But it's not just, it's not just car manufacturers. The technology that we have today can be deployed at small manufacturers as well, or medium sized manufacturers, right? Everybody, every manufacturer could be a high tech manufacturer with all the new tools that are out there. It's really very exciting. No doubt. Absolutely. And uh, you know, I, want, I would like to step back to one thing. You, you mentioned uh, that the young girl program and, and trying to get them into STEM. Are, are there, is there anything specific that you could share with our listeners that may want to, 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 to learn more or to, to help in, in these types of areas? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. I know a lot of uh, locations and probably every city and any school would love to have volunteers. Rockwell has um, a really um, invested and sponsored a program called FIRST, FIRST Robotics. But that has a whole different, FIRST Robotics is, you know, obviously robotics, but then there's different levels. There's one for small kids, little kids called FIRST Lego League. And to see little girls or little kids' faces to realize that they can do this, right? And it's, you don't have to be a boy. You don't have to be, you know, uh, 
you can do it yourself just to see the excitement on somebody's face and to let them know, yeah, you're a girl. Yeah, you can do it. I think that's very exciting. So there's first robotic stuff all over the U.S. That's one thing. The other thing is I think some of our teachers might not feel confident or competent to be able to deliver all this. They've got a lot on their plates, teachers do. So wherever we can, Rockwell I know has sponsors schools, wherever there's a time where I can participate in an hour of coding with the class or, or you know, help them you know, even to go up and read to them or even to go up and, you know, help a teacher just so that they see a girl that is an engineer, you know, somebody that there may not be anybody in their house that, that has done this. So at least there's one person standing in front of them that, look, if she could do this, I could do this too. No doubt. And you're bringing that inspiration to those young ladies and, you know, hats off to you. And, and sounds like you just, you have a lot of personal you know, joy that you get out of, out of helping them. And, and it sounds like that, that Lego program sounds like a fun time. It is fun. It is fun. Who doesn't like to work with Legos, right? That's the right. First Lego league. And it's a, and it's a, and it's a competition at the same time. So who, who doesn't like to win? There you go. So you're bringing the competition element into it and, and Legos and young ladies and STEM. It just, that's a win-win. And uh, so thank you for sharing that type of information. And, you know, Mary, when you're in that moment of flow where things are really going good for you, you feel like you're doing the work that you, you know, you, that you have a lot of purpose and drive behind. What are you doing in those moments? You know, it's really, um, gosh, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, that's kind of a hard question, but I guess in those moments, what I'm doing, you know, I feel in my day job that I am working with Rockwell customers, Rockwell employers to say, Hey, I've, I've got these folks that are trained on the equipment that you have and that, you know, and you're having a hard time selling and they think, I, I got, I got to learn more about this. That's pretty exciting to me. Or if I, or if I get a call from one of the employers and said, I'm so happy with that person we hired last year from your program, I've got three more plants that we, that could use your help and need your expertise. And I'm just really happy to be able to help them. Right. Because manufacturing is the backbone of this U.S. Um, and, and really helping them help their communities the same way. Well, very good. How about, you know, if you look back across your career, the many different you know areas that you've been in, mm. does anything stand out as a highlight that you like to share with our listeners? Yeah. You know, um, I when I first came to Rockwell, I worked in this organization. It was part of advanced technology and we wrote industry standard. So I was on a standards committee where I wrote a standard for products, environmentally conscious design. But part of that, I, I would travel. I got to travel. I would travel to different parts of the world and I would meet with our competitors would be on this, on these committees and we would be writing and hashing it out. And then we would, um, but then we got to be colleagues as well. So I think some of the highlights is the, the being able to you know, work with Rockwell and I had the great pleasure of seeing parts of the world that I never would have seen before. I went to Thailand, I went to Colombia, I went to, you know, different things and meet all kinds of people in this technical role as myself and look at it from their perspective. So it's really been, I've really been very fortunate in my career. Yeah, no doubt. So what's, what was some of the, maybe what was your favorite place to visit for traveling with, with work? So, two places actually one was Paris because who doesn't want to go to Paris right and then the other one the other one I was a little apprehensive but I ended up loving it and that was in that was Bangkok Thailand I absolutely loved it what do you love so much about it you know it was just so other when you go when you go to Paris or if you go to Europe there it's you know I'm of European descent so I see a lot of people that that look like me and you go to a city and there's things, you know, buildings that we have similar to what we have here and some of the same cars and the food and all of that. But boy, when you go to Bangkok, the culture is so different. It's so other, the smells, the people, their philosophy, it, you know, it was just, it was, it was just an eye opening experience. And I'm trying to figure out a way how I can get back there. Oh, you'll figure it out. <laughs> it sounds like a, I'm so, sure I will. So Paris was a lot of not, fun. Not in the near future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. So how about Paris? What did you enjoy most there? 
I love Paris. I love Paris. I, whenever I would get to travel and go to a European city, I would always go to churches and museums because that to me was just sort of the history of the, the history of Europe. Like it was, it was all the artwork that was done or I got to go and see the last supper one time when I was in Milan and I, and I got to go, you know, go to the Louvre and we went up in the Eiffel Tower, you know, all the traditional stuff that you do, right? Um, when you're in Paris, but it was pretty amazing. And then in between I worked. So, you know, if I got there, you know, you'd go out and get a weekend ahead of time and see all the sites as much as you can see in a weekend and then work like the devil all week long. That's right. That's right. It sounds like you and my wife are very common. We, we got to go see the churches and the museums anywhere we go, you know, so <laughs> I want to see the ballparks, right. but you know, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, priorities, right? that's right. That's right. We're, but we're doing it together as United. So I guess we're doing something right. So if, uh, I'd love to take a chance on, on these episodes, Mary, just to get, get off the work path a little bit and just talk a little bit personal outside of, outside of your career, any hobbies that you have that you enjoy? Yeah. Um, yeah, I like to work out. Um, I do that a lot. Try to do it, at, you know, as much as I can outside. Uh, the winter here in Milwaukee does not really afford that. So luckily, um, you know, head, head to the gym quite a bit. I have, I love to read different kinds of books. I love to read, listen to books while I'm working out. Um, this winter, I, well, during the quarantine, I decided to try baking again. Um, but we had to stop that because nobody wants to get the quarantine 15. So we stopped that. But maybe if we're still housebound this 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 winter again, I'll, I'll do I'll do some baking. It's very cathartic. Um, so that's what I like to do. I come from a big family, and I have 10 nieces and nephews. So uh, a lot of my spare time I get to spend with them. And boy, is that a lot of fun! I bet it is. It sounds like a lot of fun. Now, you, from from, a, from your working out standpoint what what do you enjoy doing you're a runner what do swimming what what do you enjoy so going to the gym i like to run uh I used to rollerblade a lot but i think it's um the past have got a little crowded there's bikers out there there's runners out there there's walkers out there so i think i'll stay off the rollerblades for a bit so i it's better to just stay on the just stay on the running and then just you know whatever, lift in some ways, getting, getting stronger every day, a little bit at the gym. So that's kind of fun as well. Spending time with my friends too, taking some yoga classes together or something like that. So. Very cool. Very cool. Now you mentioned a little bit about your family already, but can you, what would you, can you share mm-hmm. with us about it? Sure. So as I mentioned, I'm from St. Louis. I come from a very large family and uh, I moved, well, I ended up moving here. I, and I met my husband and he comes from a very small family. And so it's, it's been, um, we, we don't have, we don't have any kids ourselves, but we have, you know, like I said, we have a lot of family that we go visit. Neither one of us have family here in the Milwaukee area. So a lot of our time on holidays and things like that are going back and forth between visiting our family. So that, that's really been fortunate for us. We've been lucky that way. Yeah, that's very cool. Absolutely. And you mentioned that you're a big reader. So any books that you yeah. recommend and or podcasts, and we know that your answer is going to be Eco Ask Why is your favorite podcast, but just any other podcast. Well, that you know. one. Yeah, the other, that one. And then uh, there's the Manufacturing Happy Hour that Rockwell has, right? Right, um, correct. Uh, I, I listened I listen to a lot of the true crime ones. You know, it's hard to catch up because there's been just – Wow, so many. Um, my, like I said, my dad was a homicide detective. And so, you know, that's just sort of what we grew up with, always listening about crime stuff. So that's always kind of interesting. Um, I like to read history, and then I like to read, you know, some, some more fiction as well. I just finished, or I'm, you know, after Hamilton, the, the Broadway play was so big. I thought, well, I'm going to read that book. And I did, and it was so good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I really, I just finished um, sort of a historical fiction book called The Nightingale, which I think they're going to make into a movie. So that'll be fun to see. Um, I read some, I read some mysteries. I get a lot of magazines. I try to keep up on current events as well, what's going on in the world. So yeah, I look at all different kinds of stuff, but my favorite po- podcast, of course, is Eco Ask Why. There you go. There you go. Well, and we appreciate that, uh, Mary. Now you, how about, you mentioned Hamilton. Did you get to go see the show? 
I did. I did. I came through when we were in Milwaukee um, and it was great. It was, it was fantastic. I had wanted to see it in New York, never got a chance to do that, but I saw it here and boy, was it, it was really good. It was intense. It came to North Carolina as well to Raleigh and well, actually Durham and uh, my wife, it was, it was mandatory. We were going. So I said, yes, ma'am. Oh. And, and we went and had a great time. And, and she read, I think she read the book you mentioned and she kept talking about how wonderful it was. So that's two people. So I guess I need to go read the book now. So. Yeah, it is really good. And being from St. Louis, I have a special affinity for Grant. So I've got a biography of Grant next up on my nonfiction list. Okay. So I try to balance some nonfiction and fiction. Cool, cool. So now you're, you're from St. Louis. You're living in Milwaukee. Yep. So where where's your sports affiliation at? Are you 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 are you St. Oh, Louis? There's no question, right? Um, St. Louis, of okay. course, the Cardinals. And I and I don't understand why everybody hates them. I think it's I think people are just jealous. Candidly, I think that's what it is. Right. So um, I do. I will go to the Brewers games. Uh, I do go to the Brewers games. So. It's one of those scenarios, if you can't be with the one you love, right? Love the one you're with. That's right. But I do not have a Brewers. I do not have a Brewers. Uh, I do not have any Brewers fan wear. I only wear my Cardinals. If we're going to a Brewers game, I still wear my Cardinals stuff. I hear you. I hear you. Well, you're also, you're in a good basketball town there with Milwaukee with the Bucks. So you, yeah. got, you, got, you got some good, good, good teams there, some good players. So very well, I had to ask that because yeah. I, I meant to get to that earlier. So I've enjoyed this conversation, Mary, and, and, you have no doubt brought inspiration to our listeners and hopefully women out there that are listening to your path. And, and, you know, you can do this. That's, that's the thing we want to get across, you know, with this podcast and with this series that you can do this. And we call it eco ass. Why love to get to the why, you know, we're we're talking about passion and purpose. You know, what would you say would be uh, you enjoying the most about the path that you're on and what would be your drive and your purpose? Wow, that's a great question. Um, my why right now is pretty it's pretty direct, right? I am with the program that I'm managing today, this Academy of Advanced Manufacturing, I get to change people's lives every 12 weeks. I get to change people's lives. And so that's my why. How do I make an impact? How do I give back? How uh, much has been given to me? I've I've had a lot of good fortune and good luck and hard work. And how do I, how do I pay that forward and how do I pay that back? And so that's been, that's my why. Well, that's, that's a, really my why. That's a great why. I mean, that's it. I mean, you are changing lives and, and Mary, uh, no doubt, uh, you know, the information you brought forth today and, and through this, the work you're doing at the, the Academy of, of, Manufa- of Advanced Manufacturing, I mean, you're, you're just a, a, a wonderful influencer and you're, you're, you have the, a, a great heart and we just thank you for taking the time with us on Eco Ask Why to share your story, uh, trying to inspire those women out there to, to go do this. And uh, we'll, we'll just really appreciate again your time today. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.